Yo, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while and I definitely say that every video, but this time it's been like a whole pandemic. So I don't really feel too bad about that. Uh, I've been keeping myself busy though. Like I've made a couple projects, just done a few things around the house to keep myself busy. Mainly I built like a patio and a pergola like a covering for it and built some benches and I did a couple website projects. Like one was dined out black and you know, like with all the protests and stuff going on, I kind of want to make sure that I did my part, like in addition, like I, I protested once, but <laughs> I kind of wanted to, you know, participate in my way. It's a list of list of black owned businesses like around the US. So there were people, namely like Kat Hong, who is at Provolone on Twitter. I saw her list of black owned restaurants in LA and I initially made it to four to just her list, but then I started to see other lists circulating. So I got the idea to like combine it into like one list <laughs> of lists. That's one thing. And then I just like yesterday started working on an app called Swole, which is a fitness hit app. And it's like used for hit workouts. So during quarantine and during the pandemic, I gained some quarantine weight. So, you know, we've been trying to make sure that me and my wife have been trying to make sure that we you know we don't get too weighty during, during all this. So, you know, uh, in true fashion, like I made a website that kind of like details. I don't know if y'all hear these fireworks. That's been going on for like months now anyway, but anyway, so it's just a little website where you can enter your workouts into your, what you want your intervals to be in your rest periods. And then it guides you through it. It's just a cool little thing. Just me practicing react. So there's that. And then also I'm finishing up um, an album with my bro Sham and Sham 1016 on like Spotify and Apple music and stuff. We have some music out already. We just wrapped his latest album and I produced and recorded like most of it, like 90% of it. So. To relate to that, I want to kind of like detail like my audio equipment, and like some of my equipment that I have and a couple of people have asked me like what kind of keyboards I like or recommendations for speakers and things like that. Like some people have seen the speakers like that. Um, so I kind of want to talk about that and some audio equipment. Like this is definitely like a programming channel. Like I'm a software engineer by trade, but I don't want to like start off and make everything about coding. So hopefully you enjoy this video. Hopefully, hopefully it gets some views, you know, who knows, but whatever. Like. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> All right, so first off we have Sony headphones and these are my favorite headphones for mixing. They have a flat sound, meaning there's no boosted bass or frequencies or anything like that. They're pretty comfortable and I trust that if I mix a song in these, then they'll sound pretty good in other places like cars or Bluetooth speakers. Next up we have the Yamaha HS8s or the HS5 speakers. I've had these speakers for about five years now and I don't plan on switching anytime soon. They're very loud and clear and they carry the bass well. They don't have a built-in sub, but they do have like enough bass for me to really get the punch and vibrancy that I need. And next up is kind of the heart of my studio, which is the Apollo Twin interface. It's a great interface with lots of useful features for people that work with audio. For example, I'm able to connect my HS8s and a reference monitor and easily switch between them. It has a dim button to lower the volume quickly along with a microphone so I can talk to the artist in the vocal booth. It's also expandable via an optical cable, which I plug into a Behringer ADA8200, which I use when I'm recording podcasts or tracking multiple instruments. There's a bunch of plugins available for it on the Universal Audio Store, and I personally use a Neve preamp plugin. Overall, it just has great quality when recording. I've recorded like four albums using this interface and have no complaints. Next up is SM57 mics. They're pretty cheap, only $100 brand new, and I've even gotten some on offer for as low as $70. They're really versatile, normally used for recording guitar or drums, but they're also pretty good for vocals. And lastly, we have acoustic treatment. I have a mix of DIY panels and sound foam. Good acoustic treatment removes weird echoes and unexpected effects from your audio, and ensures that your audio comes out good and clean. You can get foam from music stores like Sandmaster Guitar Center, and panels are pretty easy to make if you're into DIY. In my opinion, room treatment is the most important part of recording audio, so don't sleep on it. 